Hey guys, welcome back to Pass Money. Today we're going to be reacting to Aristotle Investments on him buying dividend and growth stocks. Check out this video. I set my life up to have lots of growth stocks. So I bought Tesla, Apple, NVIDIA. So that's going to give my family money for generations to come. Tesla, Apple, Meta, AMD, stocks like that. People be like, when are you selling? Never. These are really my kids' stocks. Because what I'm going to do with them if I'm never letting them go? I set my life up to have lots of dividends. All right, Kirby. We've reacted to him before, but on a different video, different context. So this topic is interesting because we also teach about this one a lot, you know, creating generational wealth, which is the seems to be the objective of this guy. So what are your thoughts on him buying these stocks to leave them for generations? First off, I want to applaud him. I mean, I know his name is not Aristotle. I don't believe it is, but <laughs> I'll just call him Aristotle for this video. Um, I want to applaud him for two reasons, and I don't want this to sound like a Black Lives Matter video or whatever, but I'm always happy to see somebody that looked like me that finally realized that you can't sit here and keep doing the same thing the masses is doing and think you're going to get over. You know, I'm glad to see somebody ain't dribbling a basketball, you know, or rapping or something to be successful. So first off, I applaud him for that, no matter how he does it. Um, that the question that he said he always get, I find funny is everybody always asks when you're going to spend the money or when you're going to sell the stock. That's always a question broke people ask because the only thing they see is, oh, let's make that flip. And then so you can go ball out, blow the bag or whatever. But he talked about the thing that we talk about all the time is generational wealth and I know this going to ruffle some feathers and I don't give a damn if people be mad. They always want to confuse the people with money as being the selfish people. It's the people that's broke that's being selfish. Because look at what he said. Everybody always asks him when is he going to sell. He said never. He said never, not because he has some, you know, grandioso plan of he's going to live forever and he will be sitting on piles of cash. He's unselfish because he's thinking about his kids and his grandkids and the kids after that. So he's building the foundation. And then his goal is to have his kids keep building on that foundation. So his kids, kids and grandkids, then, it's, then it goes so on and so forth that everybody can eat off the fruits of the labor and the sacrifices that he made. So that's the thing that people don't get. People don't understand that. It's okay to, you know, live your life and enjoy your life. But Alex, like I always told you, the reason why I got into this was for my family. It wasn't for me. I'm the willing the person. I'm the one person that's in my lineage that's willing to make a sacrifice, give up all my time, energy, and effort so that my kids, grandkids, and everybody else can live a better life. I'm tired of seeing, you know, having cousins and brothers and sisters and all these family members, they have these kids, you know, they struggle their whole life. They don't teach their kids nothing. Then their kids struggle. And this is a perpetual, a perpetual system of struggle, 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 struggle. So that's that's a thing that he's talking about. And I applaud him for that. You know, buying the long-term stocks, I mean, you can get into the individual stocks like he's doing, the growth stocks, the NVIDIAs, the Amazons, and things like that. Hell, I got some of them. I mean, I keep it simple also because most of my money goes into the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. It still encompasses those stocks. It still pay a dividend. And then you can still sell call options on it. But the plan to sell them is not even in the horizon. The plan is to keep those. So when my kid get of age and then he get a job or what have you, he will keep adding to that foundation that I set and he builds on top of that. And then his kids build on top of that. So everybody's still eating off that money and then eating off the dividends because of compound interest. I don't give a damn if they take out the dividends, but keep having that vehicle that will keep keep producing money for years and generations to come. That is the goal of accumulating wealth. Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously I agree. I mean, we talk about it all the time. You know, that's the way that generational wealth is built and especially instilling those habits and that knowledge within you know your family 
so that they have the same mindset going into growing what you've created, growing the foundation that you've built. And we see it from other heirs to, you know, companies, the, the Walton family, we see it with, I think you had mentioned the, um, the children of the founder of Ikea, you know, there's just, there's always, there's plenty of children or heirs to these huge companies. And it's because they had the same message from their parents and they understood what, you know, the, what the purpose was. Now, obviously there was, as we talked about, you know, you got to structure it right. So the kids don't try to kill each other for the money. But, you know, if that principle is set within the kids and, you know, they will see that it's to keep the family out of poverty, basically. And I think that's the, yeah. the best. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Excuse me. Um, I, it's funny. I think you said it on. Um, I wasn't coughing to cut you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but the you said it on a short a while back and you said. People say they're buying a house to give it to their kids so their kids can fight over the asset. I mean, fight over the house. You're like, the key is to get assets that just produce cash flow, and then the kids can eat off that money to the cash flow forever. That's absolutely right. I mean, for the life of me, I see it all the time. Somebody have five, six kids, they get one house and say, oh, this is an investment for my kids. No, this is a battle royale for your kids. They're going to fight, scream, piss, bitch, and moan. And everybody's going to hate each other because nobody's going to make a decision, a uniform decision amongst all of them on what to do with the house. Usually the house goes into foreclosure forbearance because people forget to pay the taxes. And then somebody like me or Alec come up and buy the house for pennies on the dollar because the kids didn't know what the hell to do with the property. That's what people do. That is the lazy way of trying to get it done. Talking about, oh, I'm buying this, but then I didn't have the fortitude to pay it off. So uh, I'm just going to put the obligation on my kids. That's what so many people in America do. and they, But they think they're doing something. Only thing you're leaving your kids is a headache. Like for me, I have multiple properties. My kids are not left the properties. My kids are left the cash flow that the properties present. Each of them get a percentage of the cash flow that the properties uh, produce. They get a percentage of the dividends that the stocks produce. I'm not just going to be blindly and think, oh yeah, they're they just going to just do the right thing. Life happens. Drugs happen. Marriages with crazy people happen. So I'm not even putting them in that situation where they can mess up the sacrifices that this family is doing for future generations. You know, whatever they do with the cash flow, that's what they do with the cash flow. The goal is to make them understand how the cash flow is created and they keep implementing and installing uh, finances into that to keep growing it so further generations after them can benefit from it. But I'm not blind to just think that, oh, I could die tomorrow and then, oh, my kids got it all figured out. So sometimes you got to protect them from themselves and just giving them a house or giving them something like that, that they have no ideal or understanding of at the age they are at now, that's not the best thing to do. Sometimes the best thing to do is say, uh, protect them from themselves and say, oh, no, you can't touch this, but you can benefit from it. That's that's the game plan in general of how generational wealth is built. I mean, you can go to the Carnegie's, you can go to Vandenberg's, you can go so on and so forth. The kids don't have the ability to just sell off all the assets. They have the ability to benefit from the cash flow that these assets produce. They have the ability to add to the assets that's already there. But them just having unilateral decisions just to say, hey, we're getting rid of everything. Everybody take your own money. Y'all ball out. Game's over. They protected their kids from themselves. But people don't want to spend that much time, that 20, 30 minutes to understand how it's done. And they just fall into that same fallacy of, oh, I'm just going to buy a house and my kids going to benefit from it. The only people that's going to benefit from you buying a house and you think you're leaving to your kids is savage investors like Alex. That's who's going to benefit from it. Let's just call it, let's call it spade a spade. <laughs> because I, the two deals I did, one, a lady passed, I benefited from it. The other one, a lady got into a financial situation. She thought she was buying a house, leaving a legacy for her kids. And then she was in trouble. And I had to bail her out. 
But I benefit from it because, of course, I got it for pennies on the dollar. But they was in those situations. That's what happens. That's the real reality of what this supposed generation who buy the houses they live in and think they're going to pass it off to their kids. No, you're passing it off to me. You pass it off to Alex. And then y'all going to be mad at me because y'all made a stupid decision. I'm just capitalizing on stupid decisions. But Alex, I, I ain't going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> No, you're not wrong. Now I'm thinking of each property I bought, and I'm like, man, they all had kids, or you know, they couldn't, they they couldn't hold on to it. But like you say, it's fair, it's fair game if an investor can't, you know, didn't have the proper strategy. So, but I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't think people realize how disrespectful or messed up it is to like you see your parents go their whole lives building something for you and then you just cash it out when they die i mean that's just it's so wrong like it's so messed up when you could be the one to make a difference and take what they've left you and continue that on like you could be the one to literally change your family lineage i don't think people realize that like the mm-hmm. reason why there are wealthy families in the world is because they, you know, and it's not many of them at all, but they had the discipline to not make those decisions as the majority of the world makes. I mean, most people, they just want to cash out and dip from there. But if you can keep that going on for three, four generations, the amount of wealth you can build it is ridiculous. But with all that being said, guys, <clears throat> Kirby, don't die. <laughs> Uh, leave a comment down below share this video subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one